United Voices Sharing Our Stories. I'm the president of Students Towards Understanding Disabilities. Please give it up for Tamika Kitchen, who is our host for the evening. She made this whole event possible. Uh, when I was six months old, uh, my dad fell asleep behind a wheel and crashed to the back of a garbage truck. And that's how I became um, disabled. However, you know, I was able to do, you know, some things. I was Miss Wheelchair 2006. We also have this wheelchair 2003. That was Monica Smith and Elisa also to participate, you know, in this wheelchair in 2006 as well. And currently, right now, I'll be graduating from Oakland University. <laughs> Big up to OU. <laughs> According to statistics, there are 24 million women living with disabilities in America. 24 million. Now when it comes to disability, according to the ADA law, which is the American Disabilities Act, that there are different kinds of disabilities. You have the physical disability, which you see the women that are on the panel. That's people with spinal cord injuries, um, cerebral palsy, those type of things. Then also you have chronic illnesses, which uh, Luana represents, uh, like lupus, MS, uh, diabetes can be considered a disability. Um, they also have mental illness, that's people with bipolar, depression, schizophrenia. Then you have mental developmental disabilities, and those are people with autism, um, Asperger's. So disabilities is a very vast, you know, uh, group of people. So these are the panel of the women. Let's give it up for them. Mm -hmm. I have what they call rheumatoid arthritis, and that's uh, when your immune system attacks your body. So I have, I can get pain in all my joints. It affects all my joints. In 1996, I was involved in an automobile accident um, from a drunk driver who broadsided the van I was riding in, and I was ejected. So I um, had a level T6 spinal cord injury. So I have about 25% filling from the waist down. Um, uh, my, my cerebral palsy, and uh, on top of that, I have a hearing impairment. I was born a twin. My twin passed on. Mm. I was the the littlest and, and the strongest of the two. Um, I am uh, legally blind from congenital cataracts. Um, they are a hereditary form um, from my father's side of the family. In my earlier days, I could see much better until I developed glaucoma. Okay. I was diagnosed <laughs> with lupus in 1981. Um, Chronic pain is an autoimmune disease. And one, one way I think is simple for people to understand is how I understand it. It's when you get sick and we have antibodies come out to fight off whatever is going on with us, my body is always fighting. Um, I was one pound 11 ounces and 12 inches long. And because of my prematurity, I have a condition known as retinopathy of prematurity which is a fancy way of saying that my retinas um, detach from my optic nerves in the back of my eye and so therefore I am considered totally blind. I do have a little bit of light perception. Sometimes they like seem like you use your disability as an excuse. That's very hurtful. Because, you know, you really don't have to use it. You know, most people I know with disabilities want to do just the same thing as everybody else. It's hard when as a woman and as somebody who has struggled with self-esteem, you have people coming up to you and saying, oh, well, um, we want to pray for you because we feel like, you know, Satan has touched you and you're blind. <laughs> Honestly, and it's like, wait, no, no. I'm this way for a reason. You know, look at how she looks. She doesn't have any type of good sense, you know, because once they found out how educated I really was, once I was able to talk, they were in shock. Remember that group? 
pretty easy to do, so I'm sure you look at me like do my work for me. I should be. Yes. And then after the interview, she said, don't call me, I'll call you. Yes, yes. School and classes, I was the only, you know, African American young girl in the wheelchair, and that's how I was known as. And um, just because I am a woman, and I'm a woman with a disability, do not think that I'm not, number one, proud to be who I am, and number two, that I am incapable of realizing my own work, whatever that might be. Because words are powerful. You can make somebody feel less of a person, whether they have a disability or not. So the one thing you have to really make them understand is how would you feel if somebody said this to you? Turn the words inward. Look at yourself. What does that say about you? I cannot read print. Um, contrary to what anybody, you know, any of my friends might tell you, I don't read print. I think that lack of knowledge is probably the biggest piece as far as people with vision impairments. I always, I say all the time that, you know, people perish for lack of knowledge. And I think for me, what I think might be the biggest problem is um, lack of insurance and um, also uh, lack of resources and all the red tape that sometimes mm -hmm. you have to go through to get what you need. My goal is, is to educate the so-called professional doctors. When, I, when we go to the doctors and the doctors examine you, once they get past the medical picture, they can't see anything else. They don't see that even though the person may be blind or they have no vision at all, that they still have a quality of life to maintain. In 50 years, there has not been one new pill for lupus. No progress has been made. Oh, we got this other pill now. In 50 years, we're still using the same pill. In 50 years. You have whatever condition you have, you need to learn about it as much as you can. Don't just let, don't limit it to just what the doctor says. Um, because when I really took it, took my health into my own hands, I did kind of better than the doctors did. Uh, what do you want the society to know about women with disabilities? To look past that and just break it all up. They don't food judges. If you can make, if you can make, making things accessible for a person with disabilities makes things accessible for everybody. For instance, if the, you know, oh. opening the door, the doors that automatically open, you would think that's for a person with a disability, but that would help you if you had to carry every heavy books or whatever. I mean, these are phenomenal women sitting here. Yeah. Really. And once you get to know a person, it, it, can, it can change your life, it can change your world. Listen and learn. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think that it's most important for us to be identified as ladies or who we are as opposed to identi being identified by our disability. So I think that once society realizes that we are, that all of us have challenges and don't define us by that challenge, then we'll, the world will be a better place. Yes. I agree, um, and I would like to see more accessibility. Um, and also, don't generalize me. Uh, I may be in a room full of people with lupus, but we are all different. Um, how can the people, well, us, the young crowd, help? How can we be advocates if we want it to be? Well, you can start with um, getting copies of the ADA law, and um, you can go on the website and, and get information about accessibility. You can make sure that the um, campus is totally accessible for them. Um, if you have um, students that may be hearing impaired, if they need interpreters, 
to be with them. You can do things like that. So um, just uh, knowing the laws and helping um, those with challenges understand their rights. Always <laughs> make sure that you treat them with respect. Treat them like you want to be treated. And I think that if, if you see someone with a disability, you know, uh, go up and talk to them, get to know them, find out what they need. That's the best way, well, in addition to learning everything you can learn about that disability. But the best way to help anyone is just go up to them and ask what they need. You know, don't just assume, ask.